All right, so for finding binomial probabilities, this is going to be a lot of cool stuff that we're going to be working with, okay? All right, so uh, binomial probabilities is we're going to put everything together and actually just start to look at it and just work with it. So let's say you were taking a test and you had 25 questions. Okay, so the test had 25 questions. Okay, and it was A through D choices. And there was only one right answer per question. Okay. All right, now if you notice, there's 25 questions. So that right off the bat, we have fixed trials. Okay, so this is going to be really close. So we have that. Uh, there are exactly two outcomes for each of the question. Either you get it right or you get it wrong. So that's step number two. Every trial is independent. If I choose one on number one and I choose incorrectly, that doesn't affect my probability of choosing uh, correctly on number 10. Okay, so they're all independent. Okay, and the probability remains constant. In other words, the probability for each one of the questions, all right, so the probability is uh, of a correct answer is going to be 0.25. Okay, so the probability stays constant. So I am dealing with the binomial probability. Okay, so now, what if I was dealing with a trying to find the probability of getting all 10 right? So I'd set it up as x equals 10. That would be my random variable. Okay, and that would mean that I got the first one right, which is a 0.25 chance. Then the second one right, so that's a 0.25. Then the third one right, which is a 0.25. And so on and so on until I get to the last 0.25 which there are 25 of them so technically this is 0.25 to the 25th power and if you check that out that's a really small number so 0.25 uh, to the 25th power yeah it is seriously going to be a really small number so 0.12345678910112131 Eight, eight. Okay, so the probability is very small of working with that. Now, if I wanted to find the probability of getting zero right, so that would be zero right. Okay, I would look at the converse of that, and that would be 0.75 raised to the 25th power. Okay, so if I bring up that same problem but change that to 75, that actually is a lot better because I'm multiplying a lot by that. So zero point. One, two, three, four, seven, five, two. Okay, so as you can see, the probability is a lot better for this. Okay, so when we're looking at binomial probabilities, a lot of things you need to really keep into account is the probability of working with it. Now, you can use the TI-83 or TI-84 to actually do it. Uh, I like to just go ahead and have it written out and just work with it, so I'm not going to be using a lot of stuff. So the thing that you'll be looking for in your calculator is binom cdf which is going to have your n be first then your comma then your probability of success or failure okay and then the x as the last variable so that's where you're going to be putting in to actually calculate it really fast okay so in other words you would just do what we just did okay now you do need to be very careful to understand that this is just for when x equals a number. So x equals some number, uh, let's say c. Okay, so that's going to be have you have to be very careful when working with that stuff. Okay, all right, and also if you're looking for the probability of x being greater than a number, like greater than three, you have to understand that that's the same as you have to calculate it as this one minus the probability of x being uh, less than three. Okay, so that has to be a calculation that you have to work as right now. Okay, so be very careful when working with this stuff. All right, uh, another thing that you could also do is the probability of x being less than three. Okay, is the same as the probability
Well, no, it's not the same as anything else. So just be very careful in how you're working with this stuff, okay? All right, that's it.